Ed. So there's more. Christian orders Nick to get a pair of chairs, sets her up for the concerto, but orders Kill Switch to, and I quote, smash her skull in. And the dinosaur is reluctant. Adam Copeland eventually saves, spears the crap out of Nick, boots Kill Switch, has a stare down with Christian, but Kill Switch pulls him out of the ring. So Copeland spears Nick again and impales him. And he sets Nick up for the concerto. So meanwhile, Shane has recovered. And she's uh, up in the corner. Unhappy. Very unhappy about the, the state that her son is in. Christian is even more unhappy on the ramp. No! That's my son! That's my child! But Adam Copeland does not care about any of this. And he gives Nick Wayne a concerto right in front of Shana, who is not happy no, about No, she was not. No. Listen, for somebody who has never done anything... And keep in mind, you know, she was married to Buddy forever, and her son's Nick Wayne and everything she like that. grew up but around the business. You know, I, I literally think the only thing she's ever done is take jackets to the back during Tim Flower shows. Probably, yeah. Because I, I think I was watching the um, the hair match clips during mm. Observer Live, and there's a, a very, very tall blonde taking ring jackets. And it has to be Shauna. I, I don't think you'd see her face, because you just kind of see her, like, the back of her head, but she's like eight feet tall, so I'm pretty sure that's her. But uh, I think that's the only thing she's ever done. And, you know, they didn't let her do a promo or anything, but she's she's spoke before. But I thought she did a, a good, really good job in this segment. And it's clear from watching this that I don't think she's going to be like a regular, but it seems pretty clear they're going to do more with her. And so I'm trying to figure out what they're going to do. But, man, when she was sitting there in that corner and she was so mad at Edge for giving her son a concerto, I was like, my God. Is she going to join the of patriarchy? Course of course she is. Now. Is she going to screw Edge? They're going to have the next, whenever they're big, big, the big Copeland Cage matches, she's going to help Christian win and fall in line to what he says. My God. We have not mentioned or talked about her much. She has been fantastic. Yeah. The entire time. Yes. So, yeah, that, keep using her. She's doing a great job. Renee tries to interview Anna Jay. But Eddie Magic is too upset to let this happen. He's upset about Daniel Garcia dancing. He's upset about Angelo Parker having a girlfriend. He's upset about Jake Hager being obsessed with his hat. Anna wants the attention on her. She's tired of all this losing. At that exact moment, Cool Hand Ange gets a phone call from Ruby Soho. They're all disgusted in him, but he assures them he is still in Anna's corner. Continental Classic Gold League match. Roosh versus Jay White. I thought this was a really good match. They had a very... Tons of heat. Very good match. Very they physical and Roosh. intense. Yes, yes. Yes. Roosh is funny because he wrestles like a heel, but he's so awesome. Everyone loves him. Yes. Yes. Uh, I guess the key point in this match is when he's beating Jay White's ass at ringside, goes to grab some rope or cable or something from under the, under the uh, ring, and the ref sternly warns him that in a match like this, weapons will not be tolerated. And so Rush chops Jay White to death over and over again. I think I'd rather be choked. Uh, eventually, uh, Rush misses a senton, looks very painful. They keep chopping each other for a long, long while. Finishers get teased. The ref gets turned around. Jay hits a low blow, the blade or and wins and pins Rush. It was a very good match. Shadow Zier in the chat says Rush was the second biggest star in the building. I believe that. I believe that. This guy eminently. was so over. Yeah. And man, when Jay White hit that low blow behind the ref's back, I don't know if it's because they just loved Roosh so much or because, you know, they banned outside interference and they made it clear this is supposed to be a wrestling tournament. So a guy using a low blow, maybe that's why this got so much heat, but he got so much heat for this low blow Blade Runner finish. They were furious. And Jay White gets the win. I liked it. Absolutely big are shown retaining their titles in the ladder match, and the Golden Jets got a ter guaranteed title shot from the Bucks. So after the show, Jericho interrupts Absolutely Big at the post show presser, promises to see them soon, and then immediately thereafter, Absolutely Big attack him in the hallway. And uh, one of the, I think it was Shivani actually, who said, Chris interrupted them. I don't blame them a bit for what they did. That's terrible. You can't assault someone who yes, interrupts you. come on. It's That's rude, ridiculous. but you can't do that. Ridiculous. It is time for the Tony Storm Championship acceptance speech. 
So RJ, Sydney, and Renee come out there like it's the Oscars. There's a podium. They're reading out the winner of this award. And the new champion is, in fact, announces Tony Storm, who is in the audience, acting very surprised. She goes up there, overwhelmed. Luther, the butler, is with her. Excalibur reading off her credentials. How is her? This is her third championship win. In the, in the Oscar announcer voice, Mariah May is there to present her with a belt. She thanks Anthony Kahn and the wonderful people at Warner Discovery, especially Jack Warner. They start to play their music, but I'm not done, she declares. She is burning through the rest of her speech as fast as she can, dedicating it to all the little Tony Storms out there. This is my spot, she says. You will not take it. You will not make it. So stay in, stay in school. Maybe learn a trade. I love and this so much. As she is doing that exact speech, as she is talking about how these little Tony Storms can't be her, if you look in the background, Mariah May is all happy and she's so excited to be there, but she hears that you can't be like her and her face falls Aww. and she gets very disappointed. And then Tony wraps it up and then she claps for her again. But you can see what's happening here. They're planting a seed for down the road. Oh, yeah. I, 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 yes. She just debuted. And they're already starting teasing, te setting up a split. I shouldn't say teasing. Setting up a split. And then uh, Sky Blue comes out for her match, interrupts Tony, and Tony is just so indignant that her championship speech has been interrupted here. Sky Blue versus Ruby Soho versus Anna J. Oh, my God. In a random three-way. Oh, my God. First off, I don't know why this needed to be a three-way. No, I... It would have been better as a singles match. And, well, actually, you know what? I do know why it had to be a three-way. Actually, you know what? I don't. No, I don't know why Anna J had to be in there. Ruby needed to be in there because they were doing all of the stuff with Cool Hand Ange. Yes, and and uh, yeah, and that well, I have Soraya and Daddy yes. Magic out there. Yes, and I I have said it before. You know everything that they did with Cool Hand and Ruby was all done on Rampage, which is by far the least watched AEW show. Although it wasn't this past Saturday. I was right, Vinny. Mm -hmm. Rampage did better because it didn't have SmackDown head to head. But anyway, the point is. They just brought it to Collision on Saturday, and now they're full in on it here on Wednesday. And they they have done enough that you can largely see what the hell's going on. But you know, I have people explaining everything on Rampage, and they haven't even uh, they haven't even like there's so much they haven't explained so far. But they're doing this match, and like there's all this shit going on. First, you've got a three way. Which is overly complicated. Then you've got Cool Hand outside, and Ruby, and he's catching her, and this makes Soraya mad. And then I guess it's Daddy Magic have something to do with this. Daddy I have no Ma fucking da idea. Daddy Magic, Daddy Magic does not want. Maybe he doesn't want them together either. No, no, no. So they're arguing, and like there's, there's, you know, what this felt like is like. After the invasion, when they did that one show where ECW and WCW all teamed up, and it was like six months worth of storylines in an evening, there was so much shit going on here. Yeah. And somewhere in here, Sky won. Yes. Uh, honestly- She got pinned at the pay-per-view, and she won here. Thank you. She debuted her new gimmick, got beat, but then won here. And uh, it, it, it's the same- this is the wave. Everyone wins a while, loses a while, wins a while, loses a while. There's this no... was just too much. Yeah, and uh, the, the match is completely secondary to the uh, Romeo and Juliet storyline, or perhaps uh, Romy, Ange, and Rubiet. Please. Renee interviews Wardlow. You've been back in AEW for several weeks, she says. Has he wrestled one match? Hey, has he yeah, wrestled? he's done a couple of uh, quick, power bomb dudes. The squashes are so fast, I've forgotten them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, he promises the downfall of the devil will happen on my time. A.R. Fox arrives in wearing what may have been a fox fur vest. And uh, thinking about this, I, I actually watched this before rewatching the Hell of War match. Uh, the reason he's covering his back, it's all scarred up. Anyway. He interrupts Wardlow. He should take the jacket off then, dude. I guess, yeah. Like Don Callis. He doesn't wear a hat over his fucking scar. Fair. Shows fair. that thing off. Yeah. Hey, says Wardlow's putting the blame on someone else for his problems, and so Ward Wardlow headbutts him, and that's that. Well, that was a stupid thing to do, AR Fox. Yeah, I don't even know what that... that guy, guy was I, right. I, I don't need any match. advice. Yeah. Continental Classic Gold League match. Mark Briscoe versus John Moxley. God damn, I'm so mad I missed seven minutes of this match. I hear it was awesome. It was a hell of a match. But I will say that uh, YouTube TV, about 24, 48 hours later, 
they if you if you have the show recorded, they'll they'll uh, re-upload the entire show. So I can go tonight. Yeah. And watch the end of this match, but a lot of good that did me yesterday. Right, right. That was an awesome match. Uh, I, I I don't think it was necessarily any better than a lot of other Dynamite This was the events. first time they ever wrestled. First time ever Mark Briscoe versus yes. John Moxley. It was tremendous. Now, here was in this match, I don't think we got a graphic of the names in the Blue League. They did read them No, off. they did. Did they? Okay. I, because I, I literally went back to the beginning of this show. Okay. Because I wanted to make absolutely sure, but it was long after the match. Like, Moxley wins, okay. and then they're showing, like, the triple crown belts at ringside, and then they throw up the graphic. There's, okay. like, a minute left in the show. Okay, I, I did not see that. They did list off the names verbally, and two of the names in the Blue League are Eddie Kingston and Claudio Castagnoli. Now, not that long ago, Claudio lost the Ring of Honor title to Eddie in a match where they agreed, win, lose, or draw, we're tired of fighting each other, this thing is done. That was, like, three months ago. And now they're randomly thrown in the same league in this Continental Classic. That annoyed me. The match itself was great. And uh, the, it was so great. And the people love Mark Briscoe so much, they were actually booing John Moxley. And I realize the Blackpool Combat Club, it's kind of segment to segment, honestly, whether they get cheered or booed. But they were booing him passionately. They wanted Mark Briscoe to win. And uh, Moxley got one paradigm shift. Briscoe... Popped up, hit a desperation boot, and collapsed. Came back and hit the frog elbow. Uh, Moxley comes back. King Kong Lariat tries a paradigm. Or he hit the paradigm shift. It only got two. And they keep having this even encounter until Moxley realizes this paradigm shift will not get it done. I must up my game and do the Death Rider. And lifts him in the air, drops him on the head, pins him. It was a very good match. I would not necessarily it was like the best Dynamite match of the year or anything. There are matches this good on Dynamite all the time. But it was a very good match. Well, I will go back and watch this one after this show tonight because I want to see the end. Yeah, so I was uh, very much looking forward to this one. Jay White, Swerve, and Moxley all tied at three points atop the Gold League at the end of the show. Yes. There you go. That was fun. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today, and don't miss out.